All right, welcome back once again to A Simple Truth. We are continuing through Job, and in fact, we are going to be finishing up Job's discourse today. So we're going to be looking through chapters 29, 30, and 31 today. So we will hear the final summary, essentially, of, uh, of Job's defense of his own, his own integrity. Um, so we'll, uh, yeah, let's just hop in, and then uh, we can talk a little bit more about what we're going to see coming next after this. So starting with chapter 29. Job further continued his discourse and said, Oh, that I were as in months past, as in the days when God watched over me, when his lamp shone upon my head, and when by his light I walked through darkness, just as I was in the days of my prime, when the friendly counsel of God was over my tent, when the Almighty was yet with me, when my children were around me, when my steps were bathed with cream and the rock poured out rivers of oil for me, when I went out to the gate by the city, when I took a seat in the open square, the young men saw me and hid, and the aged arose and stood. The princes refra refrained from talking and put their hands on their mouth. The voice of the nobles was hushed, and their tongue stuck to the roof of their mouth. When the ear heard, then it blessed me, and when the eye saw, then it approved me. Because I delivered the poor who cried out, the fatherless and the one who had no helper. The blessing of a perish perishing man came upon me, and I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. I put on righteousness, and clothed it. it clothed me. My justice was like a robe and a turban. I was eyes to the blind, and I was feet to the lame. I was a father to the poor. And I searched out the case that I did not know. I broke the fangs of the wicked and plucked the venom, the victim from his teeth. Then I said, I shall not die in my nest and multiply my days as the sand. My root is spread out to the waters, and the dew lies all night on my branch. My glory is fresh within me, and my bow is renewed in my hand. Men, men listened to me and waited, and kept silence for my counsel. After my words, they did not speak again, and my speech settled on them as dew. They waited for me as for the rain, and they opened their mouth wide as for the spring rain. If I mocked at them, they did not believe it, and the light of my countenance they did not cast down. I chose the way for them, and sat as chief. So I dwelt as a king in the army, as one who comforts mourners. Chapter 30 But now they mock at me, men younger than I, whose fathers I disdain to put with the dogs of my flock. Indeed, what profit is the strength of their hands to me? Their vigor has perished, they are gaunt from want and famine, fleeing late to the wilderness, desolate and waste. Who pluck mallow by the branches and broom tree roots for their food? They were driven out from among men. They shouted at them as a thief. They had to live in the clefts of the valleys, in caves of the earth and the rocks. Among the bushes they brayed, under the nettles they nestled. They were sons of fools, yes, sons of vile men. They were scourged from the land. And now I am their taunting song, yes, I am their byword. They abhor me, they keep far from me. They do not hesitate to spit in my face because he has loosed my bowstring and afflicted me. They have cast off restraint before me. and my hand, the rabble arises, and they push away my feet. And they raise against me, and they raise against me their ways of destruction. They break up my path. They promote my calamity. They have no helper. They have come as road break, as broad breakers. Under the ruinous storm, they roll along. Terrors, they turned upon me. They pursue my honor as the wind. And my prosperity is passed like a cloud. And now my soul is poured out because of my plight. The days of affliction take hold of me. My bones are pierced in me at night, and my gnawing pains take no rest. By great force, my garment is disfigured. It blinds me as the collar of my coat. He has cast me into the mire, and I have become like dust and ashes. I cry out to you, but you do not answer me. I stand up, and you regard me. But you have become cruel to me. With the strength of your hand, you oppose me. You lift me up to the wind and cause me to ride on it. You spoil my success. For I know that you will bring me to death and to the house of appointed all who have lived and to the house appointed for all living. Surely he would not stretch out his hand against a heap of ruins if they cry out when he destroys it. Have I not wept for him who is in trouble? Has not my soul grieved for the poor? But not when I looked for good, evil came to me. When I waited for light, then came darkness. My heart is in turmoil and cannot rest. My days of affliction confront me. I go about mourning, but not in the sun. I stand up in the assembly and cry out for help. I am a brother of jackals and a, compassion of a companion of ostriches. 
My skin grows black and falls from me. My bones burn with fever. My harp is turned to mourning and my flute to the voice of those who weep. Chapter 31. I have made a covenant with my eyes. Why then should I look upon a young woman? For what is the allotment of God from above and the inheritance of the Almighty from on high? Is it not the destruction for the wicked and the disaster for the workers of iniquity? Does he not see my ways and count all my steps? If I have walked with falsehood or let my foot with hastened or my foot has hastened to deceit, let me be weighed on honest scales that God may know my integrity. If my step has turned away, turned from the way, or my heart walked after my eyes, or if any spot adheres to my hands, then let me sow and another eat. Yet, yes, let my harvest be rooted out. If my woman has been enticed by, <laughs> if my heart has been enticed by a woman, or if I have lurked at my neighbor's door, then let my wife grind for another, and yet others bow down over her, for that would be wickedness. Yes, it would be iniquity deserving of judgment, for that would be a fire that consumes to destruction, and would root out all my increase. If I have despised the cause of my male or female servant, when they shall when they have complained against me. What then shall I do when God rises up? When he punishes, how shall I answer him? Did not he who make me in the womb make them? Did not the same one fashion us in the womb? If I have kept the poor from their desire, or caused the eyes of the widow to fail, or eaten my morsel by myself so that the fatherless could not eat of it, but from my youth I reared him as a father, and from my mother's womb I guided the widow. If I have seen anyone perish for lack of clothing, or any poor man without covering, if his heart has not blessed me, and if he has not warmed with the fleece of my sheep, if I have raised my hand against the fatherless, when I had when I had saw I had help at the gate, then let my arm fall from my shoulder, let my arm be torn from the socket, for destruction from God is a terror to me, and because of his magnificence I cannot endure. If I have made gold my hope, or said to find gold, you are my confidence, if I have rejoiced because of my wealth, and it was great, and because my hand was gained much, if I have observed the sun when it shines, or the moon moving in brightness, so that my heart has been secretly enticed, and may my and my mouth has kissed my hand, this also would be an iniquity deserving of judgment. For I would have denied God, who is above, if I have rejoiced at the destruction of him who hated me, or lifted myself up when evil found him. Indeed, I have not allowed my mouth to sin by asking for a curse on his soul. If the men of my tent have not said, who is there that has not been satisfied with his meat? But no, no sojourner has had to lodge in the street, for I have opened my doors to the traveler. If I have confirmed my transgression, covered my transgressions as Adam by hiding my iniquity in my bosom, because I feared the great multitude and dreaded the contempt of families, so that I kept silence and did not go out of that door, Oh, that I had one to hear me. Here is my mark. Oh, that the Almighty would answer me, that my prosecutor had written a book. Surely I would carry it on my shoulder and bind it on me like a crown. I would declare to him the number of my steps. Like a prince, I would approach him. If my land cries out against me and its furrows weep together, if I have eaten its fruit without money or caused its owners to lose their lives, then let thistles grow instead of wheat and weeds instead of barley. The words of Job are ended. So a lot there. Um, I I love how Job talks about and hints and continues to hint at the character of God. Now again, I, I think we all have we all have transgressions. Um, myself, no least of all. But um, it is interesting that Job recognizes how close how close God is normally maybe not in this moment he doesn't feel that god is close but he recognizes that throughout his life and throughout hardship god is there he doesn't see him now but he recognizes that he is there and i think that's something that's a big comfort to me is um, when i fail when i sin um, regardless of that god is there in my folly um, and that goes beyond my emotion it goes beyond what i feel and what i recognize anyway uh, we will continue on um, from one of Job's new friends that we haven't heard of in the next chapter, in chapter 32. Uh, and then we will uh, continue to finish up Job. All right, friends, have a great rest of your day.